Hi all, Nick here from Technology Lowdown. Thanks for joining me again. Today we are looking at a HP Procurve 2520G PoE switch, which I've got running in my home office environment here. And basically it's a great switch. It's running quite well. It's a second hand one, so it's not under warranty anymore. But um, I wanted a solution to make it a bit quieter because if you're not familiar with these uh, switches, and I'll show you that in just a moment here, um, they are uh, quite often have fans in them which are significantly loud. Um, so, uh, so much so that you can hear it pretty much down the hallway within the house. So, um, these are the fans which were in it. They're pretty much just a generic uh, fan. Uh, you might be able to see that number there. But yeah, they're a generic fan with uh, model number FFB0412SHN and they're not worth much, you can buy them off eBay. Um, so my solution has been, well, why not try get some 4 centimeter fans which are 40 mil and these ones are 20, uh, 20 mil in depth but you can actually get 40 mil by 10 which is half the size of this. Sure they do push a little less air than what these ones would um, but they will also be significantly quieter. So my solution has been why not go for some Noctua fans, which are 40 mil, uh, they're 10 mil uh, in thickness, and uh, they're 5 volt, which means I can run it quite easily using a uh, external power supply, i.e. from a USB power adapter for the power board, or I can just plug it into my server, which is sitting directly beneath the network switch. So. Uh, I've rolled with the 5 volt uh, solution for this. So I'm just going to show you some of the pictures of how I've gotten this setup going. So uh, that's the switch as you can see there and um, the fans, you know, they're about $25 each Australian. So I brought two of these fans for $25 each, so that's $50 in total. And the great thing about these is that they come with all these accessories that we can see. So we've got um, these little soft gels which are basically a, a, a device which enables you to crimp it. You uh, can put two cables in, it pierces it, and then it will um, allow you to terminate the connection. Um, so it also comes with a couple of cabled accessories and I do actually use a couple of these in the project as well. And the other awesome thing about this fan is it will come with these rubber screw mounts which significantly lower the uh, volume of the fan. So I'll just open up some pictures here. So just see so you've got a baseline. Let's play this video for you. So this is at 100% and this is how loud it is. I won't play that for too long because it is quite loud, alright? So that is how loud it is and it's quite, um, quite overpowering, especially in a house where you can hear it down the hallway and uh, it my wife just would not be happy with that. Um, so I'll show you the internals of the switch. So this is the internals and you can see it's quite a neat setup. There's to get into this there's just a couple of screws. So there's one here, one at the other side uh, and then there's three across the back which you can't actually see in this angle. Now what I've done previously to make the switch a bit quieter has been install some of this uh, rubber matting with holes in it to basically slow down the amount of air that's going through and it did help a little bit but it was still too loud so uh, pretty much my only choice was to replace these fans. Now I could have went down the pathway of getting 12 volt fans and plugging them directly back into the board here in, in the connectors but I didn't want to run the risk of uh, destroying anything on the switch and technically the switch is still under warranty so I figure let's put some different fans in and it's not really under much of a load so I don't believe that it will significantly impair its life. Alright, so the fans are just at the side and there's a couple of screws that you need to remove um, and so there's the fans that you install. Uh, so it comes in quite a nice kit, you've got your rubber screw mounts, you've got your fan and you've got some cables and those crimp plugs I was talking about before. Um, so once you've uh, got the old fans out, you want to put those rubber screw mounts in and then quite simply it's just a matter of popping those fans on and pulling that um, rubber plug through the fan until it's nice and tight and that'll hold the fan uh, securely in place. 
And that's what it looks like from the side. Uh, it looks a bit better than it did before, actually, to be honest. Um, and so how I supplied the power was through a USB cable. So I picked up a cable from uh, JCar. I could have just used one that I had, but um, I just figured, let's just grab a brand new cable, plug it in, and see how we go. So this is the USB cable which I've used to uh, lead in the power to these fans. And as you can see here, I've stripped the cable. So what I've done is I've just cut the um, USB plug off uh, at this end here. I've cut it right there. And then I've stripped about 30 centimeters here of the black sheathing off. And then I've been left with quite a length of cable. So once you get the shielding off, which is all this outer layer here, I ended up with um, uh, 30 centimeters of um, uh, just bare wires. So once you've got that done, uh, you want to make sure your fans are routed through the um, that little hole in the uh, switch there. You don't want to go through this back section here because that's all high voltage AC power. So here's that USB cable. I've just ran it in some of those fan holes at the side of the switch and um, I've separated them. Now with USB you've got your power which is red, that's your positive. These white and the green cables, they're your data, you don't really need to worry about them for this. And this one here, running at the side, is the ground. Now this cable here, um, it's not actually in um, uh, a rubber, uh, uh, like, it's not actually inside uh, protection. So what I've done is I've uh, pushed some of the black um, she the sheathing that I took off just before when I stripped the cable and I put it back over that um, exposed ground wire just to minimize any uh, possibility of that contacting anything else on the switch switchboard so, um, so that's been done as you can see here in this picture and then I've got my uh, the black uh, and red connectors from the fan so you want to join your fan to uh, the black to the ground on the USB power supply, which we've got here. And you've got your crimp, and you want to just crimp that one down with your pliers and do the same for your positive. Once you've got that done, you're pretty much right to plug it in and see how it goes. Um, now, if you've done this all right, you'll find that you'll end up using... I'll just go back to the picture here. You'll find that you'll end up using the fan, one of these cables, which already have a pre-stripped end, and that's what you join to that uh, crimp plug just here with your pliers. Um, so at the end of the day, look, you do end up having your uh, switch have a flashing uh, fault light, but what I've done for that is I've just uh, put some tape over that, and then I'm quite happy letting it sit there do its thing. So here's the switch uh, reinstalled. The fan light is flashing, saying it's failed, but that's fine because I know the fan is still working. And I'll just play you a video so you can hear what the sound difference is like. Here it is. 100%. And that is significantly quieter. And that's from the outside. So, uh, quite an improvement, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, uh, that's just a quick little project. It probably took me about 15 to 20 minutes to do. And for that USB cable at the side of the switch, what you can do with that is just zip tie it to those um, air holes at the side. And then it's uh, sitting there nice and securely. And I, of course, they ran that lead then to the server to supply uh, 5 volt power to those fans. So I hope that video has been helpful to you. If you have liked it, please like the video. If you'd like to see more, um, maybe watch some, some of my other videos. Um, but if you want to see more, please subscribe. And thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.